Okay, in the last video I talked about using Champ or XAMP as some people call it to create a local development environment. In this video I'm going to talk about building a cloud development environment. And you don't have to actually build anything. There's a ton of free ones that you can choose from. And I'm going to talk about my favorite one. You can use basically any one, but if you're going to be following these videos, you should probably use the one that I'm using just because it's going to make it easier to figure all this stuff out. You can just follow along with what I do. And so the cloud development environment that I like to use is called C9.io. And you can see I've just gone to the website here and it's totally free, very quick and easy to sign up. If you don't have an account yet, click the try it now button and pick your username, give me your email address. They'll send you a confirmation email, click the link to confirm and you're ready to go. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've already also logged in. And when you log in, it dumps you into this, this page right here. And you can see there's a demo project already in there. You can open it. We could just ignore that for now. And what we want to do is create a new workspace. Every time you build a new project, you'll build a new workspace. And you can see there's a bunch of different templates you can choose from. So if you're building a Node project, uh, Ruby on Rails, Django, C++, WordPress, PHP, Python, and on and on. There's lots of different programming tools and languages you can you can use. We are going to be using for this project or this set of tutorials the PHP one. So you just click on that, give your project a name. I'm just going to name this PHP test. All right. Uh, you don't have to write a description. You also have to click this public thing here. It's already pre-selected. I think. When you use a free account, everything you do is going to be public. If you want to keep it private, I believe you have to pay for that. But in our case, we really don't care. Public is just fine. And once you've done all that, you click the Create Workspace button. And it what it's doing now is spinning up a Linux instance with all the tools and stuff that we're going to need. And boom, just like that, it's, it's created our container, what it calls a container. Now you can see it takes a little bit, uh, a few minutes, sometimes a little less than that to get this all set up the first time. So you just kind of have to wait here for a minute. But after that, it should, it should, uh, well, there we go. That wasn't long at all. It should start right away from now on after it's spun up the initial time. So you see, this is, this is the layout and I'll just go through here really quickly. This area in the middle here, this is basically your text editor. And right now there's just a readme file. I'm gonna go ahead and click the X here to close that. Down here, this is a terminal, a Linux terminal. And if you're not familiar with that, we're not going to be using that, this a whole lot in this course. You know, over at codemy.com, I teach a Ruby on Rails course, and we use the, the terminal quite a bit in that. But for PHP, you really don't need to use that, that very much, and we'll get into that later. On the left-hand side here, these this is your directory, and these are the files we have. Right now, we just have these three files. This is the readme file I just closed. If you double-click it again, it pops back up again. So you can keep that there or delete it. This is a, a setup file that you can ignore. It's just for PHP. And this is a default file they've created for us. And if we click on it, we see just a very simple PHP file, right? So I'm gonna close that again. I'm gonna right click here and I'm going to delete that because we don't need it. So this is the blank system. Now, what's cool about this is you can access this from any computer anywhere and it will always look like this. And as we get going, we start coding a little bit. Uh, we're going to have windows open. There's going to be different files here. If we then close this, win this web browser and then a couple days later from a different computer log back in, it's going to look exactly how we left it, which is really, really cool. So right now, I just want to sort of make you familiar with the overall setup of this thing. So let's go ahead and create a, a quick test file here. So I'm going to right click on this, this left panel here and a new file and let's call this index.php index is always the home page of a directory right so if you go to www.yoursite.com that defaults to the index page so another thing about php all php files end in this .php if you've worked with html in the past you might be used to seeing index.html well, from now on, whenever you want to use PHP, you need to end your file in .php. So go ahead and click that. Now, if we double click this, boom, here's the file right, right here. And we can start writing some PHP code right away. And I'll talk about the structure of this code later on. 
But for now, you can just sort of watch echo equals. This is my first PHP file. OK, so now we need to save this file. And I'm going to hit Control S on my computer to save it. Or you can come up here and click File, Save. See, Control S, same thing. So now it's saved. So we can actually run this file by clicking the Run Project button. And what this does is it comes down here, and it's created a new terminal window. And what it's doing is it's starting the Apache web server. And here's the URL of our project. If you highlight this, right click on it, and copy, and then open another web browser and paste, you can see, whoops, oh, we forgot, a, <laughs> forgot our semicolon. Save that, reload, and oh, we do not need an equal sign. <laughs> OK. Boom, there we go. This is my first PHP file, right? So if we right click and view the page source, we just see that text, which is this text. And there we've created our first uh, PHP file. Now this is a live URL. You can see this from any computer anywhere. So if you want to show your buddy what you're working on, he can go to this address and see exactly what, what you've got here. Now this is not a production level quality URL, right? you would not want to tell like the world at large, hey, this is my website, because it's not your website. It's just, this is a very temporary thing. As soon as we click that, we've closed it. Now, if we go back here and hit reload, it disappears. It's no longer there anymore, right? And if we come back here and click the run project again, and then hit reload, it's back. So it, this will stay running as long as this little terminal tab is open and you can keep this running forever but like I said this is not a production level quality website this will handle a few users looking at it more than that and it's gonna crash right so if a thousand people suddenly went to this website it's gonna crash right so this is just for development purposes but it's really cool that just like that we've created our, our own little project here and it's live online and in the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to set up version control using Git and how to push our code to GitHub, and then also how to push our code to Heroku, which offers free web hosting, and then it will be actual production quality. So we'll get into that in the next couple of videos right now. Take a moment just to sort of familiarize yourself with the setup here of C9. Sign up for your account, get going. I suggest you start a project like the one I'm working on right now so that you can follow along and do all the different things that I'm doing. And in the next video, we will talk about version control.